So for those regular followers of the Ethix YouTube channel, you've already spotted I've got my glasses on, so you know it's going to get technical today. So what are we up to today, Gordon? Okay, Gary, today we're looking at how we can actually improve wireless networking with our wired network that we've built. Are we going to do that? Okay, so we're going to introduce something called a wireless access point, and we found a great little product from Tender that, that's a great solution for homes, offices, probably hotel rooms, things like that. And can we alter the rig that we've got behind us in order to add one of these access plates in or do we have to do a new wiring system? Yeah, there's a, we're going to, well, let's explore first how this works. We're going to introduce a new concept for some people called power over ethernet because that's how it works. But yeah, let's take a closer look at it. So here we've got a tender wireless access point. Now I chose this one because it fits in a standard UK wall box. So here's the data outlet, pretty common. What we're going to do is remove that and replace it with this tender unit here and this creates its own wireless network so you can probably name it after your existing wireless network or you can create a new wireless network just for access through this device here now what i like about this is there's a lot of um there's a lot of these on the market you know but it's sometimes it looks a bit like stick in the starship enterprise on your ceiling where there's lots of blue flashing lights and green flashing lights and probably something that's a little bit out of place in a residential environment so this tender unit being that wall box single socket size is is yeah very discreet and can be can be tucked away just just on a normal wall plate so i can use it for hard wired there on the front and you said it'll also improve my wi-fi um, by actually powering it what's the powering element of it okay so this this itself yeah there's sort of some electronics in here not you'd know so if i unclip the front uh, it gives a little bit more clue, but there's, there's, there's not a lot to it. There's no buttons or anything. It's just got an RJ45 socket on the back, and this is the secret to powering it. So it uses a technology called power over ethernet. So essentially what we're doing there is providing the power supply to the unit across the data cable. So, so you're telling me there is a, a DC voltage being pumped down our uh, CAT6 cable then? Yeah, so there's a, I'll give a little example of it. So I'll just pop the cover back on there. Uh, I've Here's a, a network cable I prepared earlier, and I've done something a little bit, uh, okay, especially in the middle, I've stripped it off and connected two leads to it. I wouldn't suggest this is for your regular installation. What I've got at this end is a power over ethernet injector. So this is basically interrupts your network cable and puts a power supply onto the output from it. Oh, right. So okay. I'll, just, I'll just do a little demonstration of that there. So if I plug in, I've got two ports here, that's my data in that may come from uh, your, your internet router or an internet switch and, and we'll look at some more detail on that in, in other videos. Um, so I'm going to plug into the data out and power out port. I'm going to switch on, plug that in there, uh, bring in the multimeter. So you see that I'm not reading any volts, I'm reading a few volts, it's, it's hovering around but as soon as I connect my um, uh, wireless access point to it. You'll that, see that the voltage now has gone up. Is that 51 volts DC? Yeah, 50 volts. So the typical range in this for this PoE standard tends to be about between 48 and 52 volts. Uh, you can actually deliver 30 watts of power down a Cat6 cable. Right. There are various standards in existence, but this this I mean this device only takes a few watts, so that's not uh, it's nowhere near that. So that voltage is powering the electronics inside there to do the wi-fi element of that tender plate yes all right that's really interesting so that's a you know you know if you've got to think if you if you haven't got poe you'd have to have an additional power supply which means hey you've got to find one and you've got to locate the power supply near to the device so we're going to take this and put this on our rig next so let's remove our crabtree instinct uh, keystone plate and replace it with our tender one Again here, and what we've got to do is obviously change the connections at the back. We saw in a previous video how we make these off, but this is now not suited for the new plates. So the new plates, as we said before, require an RJ45 connection. So all we've got to do is disconnect this and make off a standard end. So we take this off. Screwdriver in there. Pop that one out. Okay. So because we've got plenty of cable, I'm probably just going to start again. I'm going to ignore these ends. I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to make off my RJ45 into here and then just go straight into the back of the plate. Okay. 
right okay so this will give us a point that we can hardwire into as well as a wi-fi access point as well but of course we're going to need that power over ethernet in order to power the plate itself so we're just going to do the connection as we've done before for an rj45 and then we'll be able to power the plate up and we'll have the benefits of both the hardwired system as well as wi-fi in the area so if you've got any dead spots it's great in a domestic dwelling if you've got some dead spots but obviously there's some applications for commercial say holiday um, lets or hotels or offices as well Right, so we've got a string there still. Yeah, let's get rid of our string. And we can make the end off and then just connect it up and then we can power it. So exactly the same as we've shown in a previous video presentation using method B. Take a little bit of time to, to make sure you get them nice and flat. Once you've got a few in there, start holding them. And again, the code system is actually on the crimping tool that we're going to use. So we'll be able to verify that at the end. Just check I've got them in the right order. So there we go for those. The green one's causing me a little problem there. So let's make sure that one goes in the right place. Trim them up. Let's trim them all up, not just some of them. Take our RJ45 design for Cat6. In this case for me, making sure the gold pins are pointing forward. Position them in like so. And now we can check. I'm gonna check they're all in the right order. So we've seen previously on the uh, crimping tool from Ideal Industries, we've got A and B, and it goes orange and white, orange, green and white, blue, blue and white, green, uh, sorry, white and brown, brown, so I apologize, it's you know, obviously white and orange, okay, yeah, so our colors are down here, okay, and now we can just make sure it's fully inserted so it gets a cord grip element as well, so push it in so it will squeeze up the cord grip and obviously the insulation displacement as well, into there, crimp that one up, and we should be, Good to go for our plate, so simply just get it onto our plate, clip it into position. Okay, we're going to curl the cables in the back. I'm going to screw now back the actual plate itself into position. In order to do that, you've got to take the front plate off. So let's get that front plate off from under here. So clip away here, pulls off. There we go, so we don't see the screw, so we've got a nice little finish on it as well. screws in and I'll have another little play with my speedy two so get those up we all like a so there we go so let's get the speedy two back Okay, so plate. All ready to power it up. I like that, no screws. So really nice looking plate so we can connect hardwire internet in, but also works as a Wi-Fi access point in the area as well. So Gary's kindly fitted our tender access point to the wall plate. We're now gonna look at the changes we have to make to the wiring back at the patch panel to get the power out to it. So this is our patch panel we've been featuring in all these videos on home networking. If you haven't seen those, check out those videos so you know how all this is put together and what's going on behind the scenes. So this is the wire that comes from our uh, internet router that basically brings the data into the patch panel and then goes out to the access point. We're now gonna have to alter this so we can get power onto it to power up the access point. So we remove it from the, the patch panel insert it into the data in port on the power over ethernet injector 
and then we're going to have to bring in a new patch, patch lead to go from the output with the power on it back into the patch panel that goes out to the access point. And here's one that Gary made earlier. And Gary's got nothing to do at night now, so he just makes up these leads endlessly. We used to buy them in, but we don't need to anymore. Um, so I'm going to plug this into the power and data output. So this, this lead now has uh, the voltage superimposed on it. That's going to power up the patch panel. Uh, plug that into there. And you'll see that the light's on. It's in the PSE, so it's drawing power. And you can faintly see the green flashing light behind the uh, tender router. So it's now powered up and working. So this particular one, we've already pre-configured it. We've got another video that shows you how to do that setup, give it its Wi-Fi name, set up the security. Uh, but just to prove it, open up the settings on here, and there you'll see there's our eFix network, which has been generated by this access point. So we've seen there how we can put power over ethernet onto one of our access points, but could we put it onto multiple points? Yeah, there's an easy solution to that, Gary. You can buy Ethernet switches that are enabled with PoE on each and every output. And I believe you're fitting one of them at home. I'm attempting to fit one of those at home where I've got uh, more than one tender access point. However, where are we going next in this series? Okay, so next we're going to try and take the Wi-Fi out into the garden. Joe's done a great video that shows an easy way to do that by just extending your existing Wi-Fi network. But we're going to look at this, again, PoE enabled uh, TP-Link access point that's specifically designed to take the internet outside into your garden. As always, eFix are interested in your comments on home networking systems, so please leave them below and we'll try and answer as many of those as we can.